today on Divorce Court. I'm here today to bring communication into my relationship to work on how I handle situations. I'm here to get help with communicating with my wife. She has problems with keeping her hands to herself and when Nikki pops off and gets physical, it kind of scares me for her safety and my safety. You don't trust me? Then yes, I pop off. I get physical because I've had enough. I'm sick of it. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Nikki James and Brian James. The two of you have been together for three years, but married for one. You are in divorce court already. You have one child together. Mrs. James, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me about your relationship and why we're here today? We are here today because Brian has trust issues, and I'm feeling as if we need to work on our communication. Tell me the nature of the trust issues. He goes through my phone 20,000 times a day. It's okay for him to go through my phone, but it's a problem for me to go through his. Um, Mr. James, do you go through a phone a lot? Yeah. What are you worried about? <laughs> um, not so much as worried. I just don't want to be, be a fool at the end of the day. Has she done anything to cause you to believe that she is cheating on you or doing something inappropriate? Yeah, whenever we argue, she's, she's not around. And I try to get in touch with her to find out the whereabouts. And she, I can't, because she won't let me know. Do you have any reason to believe that she's going over a guy's house? Maybe she's just mad and off pouting at her mom's or something. Well, just the fact that she won't be up front and tell me where she at when I'm asking. Because I feel as if it's no need for you to know. But I'm... it's preventative on your part, is what you're saying, Samar. You don't want to look like a fool, so you look through her phone just in case she might be doing the wrong thing. And when I have looked in the phone and found something... What did you find? I have found talking to ex-boyfriends and little notes. What kind of things was she saying? Uh, to the ex-boyfriend or notes? Either one. Whatever's most incriminating. Uh... Most incriminating would be the notes she would write to herself saying that uh, she wished she was living that military life, uh, more houses and more cars and no stress. And, was, and then refer back to me how, how this is struggling life and call me all type of B words and just different names. So, so you, do you write down somewhere on your phone or wherever that, that, that you're dissatisfied with the life you're, you're living with him and calling him a bee and all that? I do, because that's how I get my anger out. Either it's in a notebook or it's in my notes on my phone, which I have the right to my feelings. That's a problem with him. Mm -hmm. So he goes through my notes, and if those are my feelings, why are you even reading through it and then trying to come back to me with, why did you say that? I'm entitled to my emotions and my own feelings. I'd rather write or jot it down than react. So most of the time I react. And I agree with you 100%. I agree with you 100% about it's better to write them down than react. But let me ask you this. It, at, once you write it down, do you come to him with your concerns in a reasonable, rational way so that you can somehow overcome those feelings by fixing the problem? When I write it down or I put it in my notes, I later go back to it and read through it to see, you know, how stupid it may have sounded or, you know, like, Nikki, you were really feeling this way about this? Yeah. And then I'll delete it. And sometimes I don't delete it because I'm so set in that emotion. Now, Mr. James, I'm just going I'm, I'm to throw this out there for you. She's writing down her negative feelings. People think all kinds of bad stuff all day long, and she's writing it down so she doesn't act on it. Don't you think she has the right to just purge her emotions on somewhere? Uh, as long as she's honest with you about her concerns, don't you think she has that right to privacy? Yeah, she has right to privacy. I have no privacy if you keep going through my phone. You say she has a bad temper. Give me some examples of the things that she's done in a fit of anger. If we're in a car, it'd be like slamming on the brakes or just driving real fast or breaking up the car or if I'm out the car, she try to run what me you, over. When you say breaking up the car on phone, what does she do? Uh, she used the car as a weapon. I if, broke my if windshield. I get out. You broke your mad. own windshield. Oh. She threw her own phone at, the, at her own car windshield. Do you drive all fast and crazy and slam on your brakes? 
I may accelerate, but yeah. I have I have learned to pull over, take time out to calm down myself. Yeah, because the rest of us on the road don't want to die because you can't control your temper. I'm right. just making sure you understand that. Right. But I, I have even tried to... Because he, he nags of accusing me of cheating constantly, constantly. And if I already answered it once before, why do you keep bringing it up? What does he nag about? Just the need to know. So who you sleeping with? So mm. who you sleeping with? And I, and I answer, nobody. So who you sleeping with? Mm -hmm. Ten more times, and I'm trying to drive, so, and I know I have an anger problem. Mm. So I pull over. I even take my key out. I asked him to get out first, mm -hmm. and that was a no. So I'm going to get out. And Mr. Walk. James, are, are you riding her about who she's sleeping with when, in fact, you don't have any concrete evidence whatsoever that she's doing anything wrong? No, I have evidence. It just, it just haunts me. Well, tell me. me what the evidence is. When you hiding in the bathroom, using your phone, and, and you're on Facebook talking to... Who's she talking to on Facebook? Supposedly, it's, everybody's her cousin. And I don't know who her family is, so... <laughs> but... Well, are you friends with her on Facebook? Sometimes when we match, she unfriend me all the time. Do you unfriend Seriously. him? Seriously, I do. So I that's why I got him trust on issues. Facebook because he feels the need to whoever I add as a friend, he'll go add him. You don't know that person, every single person. You no. don't know this person, so why are you no. trying to add them as a friend? Okay. Well, why do you have them as friends? Well, l let me ask you this, Miss James. Uh, you say that that he's always expressing his feelings about your relationship on Facebook. Is that mm -hmm. true? Tell me so what. So everybody he's... knows you're going through problems because you, um, these women never know what they have until it's gone and da 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 da. Like you and your emotions all over Facebook. So basically, if somebody wanted to talk to you, oh, they already know what to say because you're going through something. So if Mr. whoever. Mr. James, do, do you share your problems? On Facebook? She talks to our neighbors and talks to everybody in the neighborhood about me. Yeah. And our family and yeah, our I business. I got some feelings about all of that, but before I get to my feelings about all of that, I want to talk about the police, your children, and how you behave. She be up and stuff, and she does things to manipulate and put me away. I'm not going to hit no female. Why are you going to start a fight with a guy that you know ain't going to hit you back? I did not. It was over $150 because I told him I was. Did you put them. your hands on him? No, I, I maced him. It hurt. I understand that the police get called on the regular with respect to you, you, you guys. Ms. James, can you? Tell me briefly all the times that the police were called, who called, and who got arrested. It's vice versa, a different person every time. It's mm -hmm. either me or him mm -hmm. each time. How often have one of you, one of the two of you gone to jail? Too often that the officers know our names and address and see us out and know our names. What is the nature of the conversation or argument you're having that precipitates a call to the police? It could be anything, um, like around tax time, it was over $150. Who went to jail that time? He did. Did you have to bond him out? Yes. How much that cost? I don't know, but it, it gets pricey. <laughs> Mr. James, what's your take on that? How do you, why do you think this is happening all the time? Because she be up to stuff, and she does things to manipulate and put me away. So she can go do what she want to well, do. Well, give me an example of, of a, a circumstance she manipulated so she could, so you could go to jail so she could do start what she wants to fight. do. I'm not going to hit no female. Why are you going to start a fight with a guy that you know ain't going to hit you back? I did not. It was over $150 because I told him I was Did you put him. your hands on him? Exactly. No, I, I maced him. Oh. It hurt. I maced him and he... Are your children home when you do this nonsense? Yep. They were outside. No. They're playing. home, though. They your called. mace don't just they evaporate. Know, yeah, my daughter they called, called the police. Now, I'm angry with both of you on that one. I'm angry with both of you. I don't care 
what the issue is, $150, a text, an email, or whatever, you don't have the right to put that kind of chaos in your children's minds. If you're fighting and mason and calling the police, they're raised in chaos. Right. When you raise them in chaos, they become chaotic. They don't know how to resolve anything. You teach your children how to feel by the way you behave. Look at what you're teaching them. Well, the only reason why... <laughs> the only reason why I maced him was because he came towards me and because upon arriving at home, my bed is outside, my dresser is outside, my TV is outside, everything is outside. Mr. James, did you put everything outside? <laughs> Miss Tola, I put everything outside just the same way I put it in there. That was my stuff. I'm just showing her that I can take back everything I put back in there because you promised me to loan me some money that I was gonna give right back to you and she didn't. So you that's why I, hang on, hang on, that's why I did that hang, example. Hang on, hang on. You, so we're still talking about that $150? That's why I was out there, because I was showing her, if you don't want to help me, then I don't need to help you. I put all them items outside because I put all them items in that house. Okay. That's my stuff. Next, I want to talk about why I have written all the way through your documentation the phrase, stupid tax. I can't even talk to my neighbors. I don't have no friends. I only have two. Because he's on you all the time. Do you see that she's crying over there? Do you know why? Yes, I do. Tell me why. Is Nikki cheating, or is it only happening in Brian's mind? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. I understand you two have issues about your employment. Explain to me who's employed, who's not employed. Mrs. James, I'll start with you, and then, Mr. James, you can tell me your version. What's going on there? I quit my job. Why I've been did you the quit your job? Because I've been the breadwinner, the man and the female in the relationship since the whole, the beginning of the relationship. And I told him I was done. I wasn't working anymore. It's time for him to step up and be the man, what so I'm used to. So you got, you got three kids in the house and your response to him not working is to, is, is to not work yourself. Is that what you're telling I me? I couldn't work. How can I work when every five minutes, is she there? Is she there? Who is she meeting somebody there? You quit your job though. You weren't fired. You quit. Yeah, I quit. Because that's a foolish thing to do. You have to feed your children. Whether or not you have to deal with right. his annoying calls or not, those children must be economically sound. <laughs> Mr. James, why don't you tell me your side of the story with respect to economic burdens in the home? Ma'am, I, I work, but most of the times I lose my job because I'm frustrated about what's going on in my home. That means I'll he quits. Is that true? No. I He'll said I lose my job. And won't go. When you say what's going on at home, is it do you mean the fighting or are you concerned about what she's doing and is she cheating? No. Or both. All of it. Both. Because when I leave, my kids and the ones I love is, is there with her. And if she's mad at me, she's not the one I love no more. She's become a whole nother person that don't want to tell me. Describe nothing. that person. She is evil. This is somebody that will might can hurt me because she know all my triggers. When I ask where my daughter's at, or where the kid's at, it's, it's no, don't worry about it. And that hurts. That really hurts. When he you do, you, do you refuse to tell him where no. his child is no. when you're angry with him? No, no ma'am. I give him a response. It's not the one that he wants. What is the response that you give The response it? is, the children are with me, we are with family and safe. Mm -mm. He wants to know, where are you? Nah. My exact location. Well, if, if you're with family, why can't you tell him? It's his kid. Why not? Because he rules every other aspect of my life. Like, if I'm mad at you, love, please pay just the bills give me a time. chance to mm -hmm. sit and vent to my family. That's a problem. And I, got still, I can't talk to anybody. I can't even talk to my neighbors. I don't have no friends. Only have two. Because he's on you all the time. <laughs> let's, let's, let's give her a moment. Do you see that she's crying over there? Do you know why? Yes, I do. Tell me why. Because when the real and truth hurts, <laughs> real and truth hurts. Keeping it real hurts. But it was about you, and you ain't even heard that. What? Why are you crying? Why don't you tell me, Mrs. James? Because I feel like I have no freedom. I can't be me. And then 
We're not trying to be me. Oh, you and it's like somebody totally different. You must be doing something. I like to have fun. I like to have the freedom to say what I want to say or talk to people without it being, oh, how do you know him? You used to date him or... Yeah, I got it. I know exactly what's wrong. I know exactly what's happened. I know everybody I'm going to yell out, with both of you, which is both of you, and I'm going to tell you about the stupid tax. What is causing the anger and unhappiness in Nikki and Brian's one-year marriage? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Sometimes impoverishment is a set of circumstances that you can't control, that you're just born in a situation, and sometimes impoverishment becomes a state of mind. And never let your emotions get in front of your money. When you let your emotions get in front of your money, that, that's when you're paying the stupid tax. All that bail, all of those windshields, the car, that fighting, the breaking, all of that is stupid tax. You didn't have to pay it because you paid it because you're not grown enough to handle your feelings, taking care of the car and all that kind of stuff, fighting over $150. You probably spent $1,000 trying to get out the trouble you did about $150. You have to be grown. You have to act like you got some sense. You have to act like you want your children actually to have a future somewhere out of an insane asylum. That's number one. Number two, here's her problem with you, Mr. James. Uh, you're scared. You're scared to death. You are insecure, and you said something, and people say this to me all the time. <laughs> I don't want to be made to look stupid, so I got to make sure she's not doing anything. If you're living your life on social media, if you're living your life on Facebook and Twitter, and you're worried about what the world is going to say about you, you can't conduct a marriage. All you're doing is trying to represent yourself to the world, and your representation to the world takes precedence over your obligation to your wife and your obligation to, to your children. So you worried about what's going on and all of that. So you can prove to your, you know, don't look foolish, but you haven't done what secures a marriage. What secures a marriage is economic security. What secures a marriage is love and connection and communication. And Ms. James, all day angry, ain't never fixed a thing. I don't know where women have gotten the idea that if I'm loud enough, if I'm angry enough, if I'm nasty enough, if I am hoop and holler sufficiently, Everything is going to be all right. That is not a sign of power. That is a sign of weakness. Fear causes that kind of anger. And it is destructive, not only to yourself, not only to society, because you're driving in a car, but to your children as well. I think you both need to grow up. I don't think she's running around at all. I just don't think so. I think you've got it all in your head. I've got to make sure she's not doing anything. And you're restricting her in a way that kind of makes her a little crazy. She's responding inappropriately. I mean, quitting your job because I've done it all this time. That's just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. I think you both need to go into counseling, whether you stay together or not. And I think together right now is not a good idea because your children are in there. They, all of those darts you're throwing is going right through them before they hit the other person. So you need to separate until you can get it together. Go into counseling together because you need to co-parent even if you don't get back together. But you got to get that tick in your head fixed about how she's doing something all the time. You know, if she's cheating on you and you find that out one day, leave her there. But don't make every day miserable on the chance that one day she might do something wrong. And, you know, keep your jobs and keep your temper. Don't go flying off the handle and all that nonsense because it doesn't help anybody. You understand what I'm telling the two of you? Yes, ma'am. Act like you got some sense when you leave here. This matter is adjourned. Judge Lynn Toller wants me to separate from my husband, but I feel as if that's not going to happen. We can pursue counseling and move forward that way because I love my husband and I got married for a reason. Even though I feel like my wife has cheated before, I want to save my marriage because I'm all into this family and I want to be there to watch my kids grow and I won't let no other man or female step into this, take my position. And I, my kids know I love them and I love them and I will show them.